All right, everyone, like I just mentioned on the intro, today is a very special one, especially for me as a lifelong Ohio State Buckeye fan. Man, thanks for coming today. Appreciate it. We got the one, the only 12-gauge, a.k.a. Cardell Jones, in the house here at Obets. So we apologize for some fan noise, but we're live, baby. We're live. Thanks for coming, man. I really oh, appreciate, no, appreciate it. Yeah. it. Thanks for having me, man. I've been in the store a few times. Um, you know, with with hunting gear and getting ready for the season and hanging out with some buddies. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool to see the behind the scenes stuff of this. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, we came in on a Monday. Give you a little bit of privacy here. That way, I think we'd have a whole bunch of people lined up to yeah. see you. So, um, for those listening, you may have heard of some stories about Cardell from, uh, I believe, episode is it six? I want to say six with Schlegel. Wow, yeah. he did this so long ago, and I'm just yeah. not hearing about this. Oh, man, he didn't text <laughs> you at all. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, so uh, get Schlegs, Schlegel, Schlegel Valley, however you want to refer to him as, the, the dude flipper himself. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome interview, man. Uh, him talking about, like, hunting hogs with knives and stuff. He's, yeah. a, he's a wild cat. Mm-hmm. And he actually shot a doe. Uh, so we're as we're recording this, um, we are the Monday after season start. We'll probably air this sometime in October. And uh, Schlegel, already, he's already on Opening the board. Day. Yep. Opening day on the yep. board. On the board. So... We'll dive into that and kind of why it's important to Cardell here in a minute. But before we get too far, man, let's go ahead and introduce yourself for those people that don't know. A little bit of background to you, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit of high state before we get into some of the hunting. Sweet. Uh, Cardell Jones, I uh, clearly play here at Ohio State, I want to say, 100 years ago. <laughs> Sometimes it seems <laughs> yeah, like a don't. Yeah, a few years ago, had the opportunity to be a part of a national championship team and play for a guy named uh, Urban Meyer and uh, uh, Tom Herman, which was yeah. great coaches, and these guys really – Helped me to be a, a great player and um, you know a great teammate. Had an opportunity to be drafted to the uh, Buffalo Bills in '16, and yep. um, you know, I spent a few years in the league with the Bills and the Chargers. And you know now I'm back in Columbus and kind of trying to find my way in blueprint in the corporate America world of yeah. Columbus, Ohio. And you're doing a pretty good job at that too, man. I mean, the, uh, was it the Foundation? You yes. Started? Yeah. Yes. Um, let's get into a little bit of that. So, I mean, we can't talk to you about the notorious tweet. Oh, fly yeah. or stuff. But it's funny how, man, life has changed so much in, like, what is it, seven years? Yeah, yeah, seven years since I took a snap at Ohio State, I believe. Um, yeah, it's changed a lot. I mean, you know, and not just my life, but the dynamic of college football, you know, like you mentioned, the foundation, which is a uh, nonprofit that uh, me and Brian Schottenstein started. Yep. I'm pretty sure people are familiar with the Schottenstein family. And, it, and it's a foundation that benefits the student athletes at Ohio State football and basketball team right now. And here in the near future, we're going to announce that on the other team that we're going to start helping okay. um, raise an NIL dollars for it to uh, support their players and support their program. So we're really excited about that. And then outside of that, I also have a marketing agency, 10 Talents, where mm-hmm. we represent student athletes, not just at Ohio State. We got some at Cincinnati. We got some at Penn State. And um, we help them with their NIL opportunities and, you know, manage them and make sure they're not being taken advantage of and, you know, protect their brand and help build their legacies. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't come to play school. (laughs) Some some didn't. Some didn't. (laughs) No, man. But it's so cool to see, like, could you imagine what NIL would have been like? Like, think of, like, you and JT. And yeah, you know, you I mean, know uh, Braxton, like yeah. those guys. Oof. Yeah, we were laughing about that because I think earlier this year, Ryan Day, I think it was around the Big Ten Media Day, Ryan Day made a comment about his roster, you know, NIL support, trying to get, yeah. you know, the fans, the boosters, the donors behind it um, to do things with collectives like ours and stuff like that. That his roster is like, you know, roughly $13 million or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty number. Then I started thinking about the guys on my teams and the teams I was a part of. I'm like, man, that number would have been like 30. Mm-hmm. You know, the three names oh, yeah. you just mentioned. Yep. Yep. You got a guy like Ezekiel Zeke, Elliott. Zeke, yep. You got uh, Joey Bosa, Von oh, Bell, uh, Eli Apple. Denzel. Denzel. Oh, oh my God. And then more on the offensive side of the ball, you had Taylor Deckard, Kobe Bourne, yep. uh, Mike Thomas, you freaking um, Curtis Samuel. Oh, yeah. Uh, like all and these the guys would have been. Could have been more you know, than 30. We, yeah, we all would have been yeah. making a significant amount of life changing money oh, yep. for sure. in, in college. Well, I believe. You know, but. I'm, I'm happy this era of college athletics has none as this because these, these yeah. guys deserve it. Yeah. These guys deserve it. You know, they deserve to make money on their name, image, and likeness and, you know, from the brand they built on and off the field. Yeah, especially you know? when you start seeing those dollar amounts coming in from the TV deals and stuff. I mean, yeah. the most recent one, what was it, like $100 million a school or something crazy like that? Yeah, like, because, and then that's going to increase with the revenue when uh, the USC and UCLA comes yeah. into the play because, you know, now in the Big Ten, we'll pick up the West Coast market. Yep. Really, Ohio State will pick up the best Oh, for sure, market. for sure, yeah. No offense to the Big Ten. Well, yeah. Ohio State carries. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and Ryan said it himself. You know, it's going to be cool to have someone else carry the bucket. You know what I mean? Because yeah. so much of that revenue base is driven 
it doesn't matter who you're who you're playing or what you're watching. You know, it's Ohio State's going to draw the eyeballs. I mean, I saw the stat the other day, the Toledo game. Now it was a primetime night game on Fox, but they drew like 3.3 million views. Yeah. And it was like third, and it was against Toledo. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this is against other schools that had a more of a marquee matchup. Ohio State's drawing the numbers, and it's, it's awesome to see that these guys are able to get the opportunity to, uh, you know, just profit off of that. And, you know, some some it's life changing money. Some you know some are coming from the NFL background. They got family and stuff. It may not be as life changing, but at the same time, these guys are getting rewarded for for being able to put their like you said earlier, but you know putting their bodies on the line and stuff yeah. too. So yeah, so they deserve it. I'm happy it's here, and hopefully it doesn't you know screw up the dynamic too much. But it yeah. has thrown a wrinkle. Oh, for things, sure. But so it's we'll cool. See. Right. Only time will tell. Yeah, Ohio State's getting out in front of it too, so that's nice. And then I know you you had mentioned other sports too, so. I'm a big wrestling fan. You know, High State's got a great wrestling program. Tom Ryan and yes, those guys. Tom Ryan's doing his thing there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It, you know, go look at the Cavelli Center. You know, it's that's just a it's beautiful bowl. Beautiful. It's unbelievable. Um, I know you had. Did you have a, a softball girl too? Didn't you? At one yes, point, yes, I, I do. Yeah, um, Cami Cortex is a softball player here at Ohio State, and um, she's killing it right now. They just started a fall ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just had opening day. I think Friday was their first game. Okay. Um, and uh, she's killing it. The team is killing it, going in the right direction. Got um, a great group of core players back and returning. Yeah. Um, so excited for them as well. Yeah, it's just neat to see that, you know, High State, well, albeit that we are a football school, there is just so many other programs. I mean, even from, like, our, our world, like a shooting team, yeah. awesome. Yeah. The tennis guys are killing it every single year. The softball teams, the baseball teams, everyone is just the wrestling team. Every, yeah, exactly. Every, and then let's not forget our hockey team just won a yeah. national championship yeah. this past season. And yeah, thank, yeah, thanks. You know, our Seek and I swimming two years ago, I want to say one. So there, it, it's going in the right direction for with a lot of different programs. I think I think Ohio State has 36 or 38 sports, which I can't even name 36 yeah. or 38 sports. <laughs> right. But it's pretty cool to see that, you know, they're giving opportunities to a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different sports to play at a high level. Oh, mm-hmm. for sure, for sure. So – Let's get into a little bit about you and that 15 team, which, well, we can go for Let's start at 14 because that's the one that changed the world for a lot of people, man. But we got to – let's talk about their run, the Michigan yeah. their Michigan run. I'm sure you've talked about this a thousand times. But, you know, I was, I was there watching the game. When JT goes down, here comes your, your moment. Yeah. I mean, what did you think in that moment? You just ready to go? Uh, just ready to go. I think our coaching staff um, did an unbelievable job of keeping guys ready to go when it came to situations like that. Yeah. You know, we will go through practice, and this is not just in camp. This is all year round where we have a period, clearly in a season, when you have good on good, so one yep. defense versus one offense. You know, it's only a limited amount of plays because you don't want anyone hurt, you know. Um, it's usually around eight to ten plays that usually on a Tuesday after uh, last period of practice. You know, we just call it like bloody Tuesdays, winner loser days, and things like that. So, you know, right in the midst of it, it may be a third down period where we practice in third downs, and maybe the first play is third and six, maybe the second play is third and four, and we got to get the first down, or we, you know, sure. punting the ball. And uh, the staff did an unbelievable job of just randomly calling guys out. Oh, well, hey, uh, you know, Taylor Decker, our left tackle, he he got an equipment issue. He got to come out of the game oh, for a play. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So his backup had to go in for that one play. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, uh, freaking quarterback got his mouthpiece or, yeah. you know, his shoe came off. He got to come out for a play and put your backup in to make sure guys are paying attention and getting their mental reps. Yeah. Um, that staff was huge on mental and physical reps, and clearly you can have so many amount of physical reps because of the nature of the game, but you can have unlimited amount of mental reps. So I can just remember being, you know, watching JT or Braxton in, and I'm being behind them, you know, roughly seven to eight yards, and, you know, seeing the signal from the sideline, going through the play, and as they going through their, their cadence, getting ready to get the ball, I'm doing the exact same thing, about, you know, seven to eight yards behind them, and I'm going through reads, and our coaches were really – I mean, our coaches started that for us, but they would pay attention to it. So, for example, if JT threw it to the left or whatever play it was, and I was looking to the right, because you see my stripe on my helmet, yeah. he's stopping the film, he's coaching me, like, Cardio, why are you looking over there? What, what made you go over there? Okay. And things okay. like that. So even though I wasn't getting that physical rep, I was getting that mental rep. Mm-hmm. I was going my pre-snap reach and everything. So they did a great job of keeping guys prepared that way. So when that happened, um, and then we had other injuries during that season where, you know, a, a key member of our team went down and their backup came in and, and, and you know, was just as productive. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. And so 
you know, the, the, that obviously with the 59 nothing happened with Wisconsin. That was a game changer for not only the program, but just the outlook of that year. It felt like it was almost destiny at that point once we got that game under. And then, I mean, of course, you still had to go to New Orleans and beat Alabama and stuff. The thing I remember the most, you put in, um, what's his, uh, Collins. Huh. You remember that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that yeah. was a hit, man, because there was so much hype with him coming in there. And yeah. Yeah, I think you pancaked him. Yeah, which, but, but he was a, he's an awesome player. Though. Oh, yeah. Awesome he's still player. Dude. He's, yeah, is he he's, still in the league? I believe so. The Giants, with, right? The, Gi- the, the Giants were the commanders, one or the other. Okay. I can't okay. remember. But I know he got drafted originally to the Giants. Yeah. So I think he's with the commanders now. But awesome player, man. Highly recruited guy out of high school. You know, usually you don't see guys pan out from high school, five-star All-American, to transition to college and be top guy All-American yeah. to be projected. He, so he was living up to the hype. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable player, man. Great player. A guy that you had to know where he was out on the field at all times. But, you know, had an opportunity to, you know, see him in the middle of the field. Oh, yeah. And it kind of, you know, it wasn't like I was going to try to shake him or anything like that. The guy was no, a yeah. way better athlete than I was. So <laughs> I just, honestly, I had one choice. is to try to go, you know, through him for the most part. But... It was a it was a great game, man, and um, you know me and him had our battles, and we met a few times. He had a pretty good hit on me actually earlier that game, and yeah. then um, it was a big actually. I think it was before that run. I think it was in the second quarter. He had a big. We was we was going down, we're trying to come third in like two to three yards. We did quarterback power, and I ended up getting, but I spent off, and as I'm spinning, and he hit me right in the back of the head, mm. and. Concussion protocols wasn't a thing yeah. yet, but I'm sure I was concussed. Yeah. Like, I was just like, got back to the side. Like, like I knew we got the first down. Yeah. I want to say maybe six, seven plays later, we ended up punting. I came back to the sideline. I'm just like, he got me good, didn't he? He was talking to JT. He like, yeah, he got you pretty good. He got you pretty good. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, I was like, I don't even remember the next play after that. Look, look, yeah, but. That's awesome. Uh, but, yeah, great player, though. That's awesome. That was, uh, man, I'll tell you what, as a high State fan, that was probably one of single handedly one of the best games ever. Like, I mean, I really enjoyed, and, and I'm talking to you, and you're the one that won it. But like, I'm really, I really enjoyed the national championship game. But I kind of felt like that. I don't want to take anything away from that game, but like to me, like that Alabama game, that was the national championship game. Man, every, <laughs> everybody says that. I, I mean, and, and, <laughs> and because it's such, I mean, they're such a mega giant. You know what I mean? Like they're they were such a giant, and they've always been a giant, and they still are. Yeah. And it's like to do that kind of on their home turf we know the sec don't travel north with mason dixon right so you know to do that on their turf and then just uh the the way that that game was and it was i mean the score ended up being a lot closer than what it ended up being but i felt like that game like second half it was just so dominant like yeah the the score didn't really show predict yeah it didn't really show we did we gotta get tyvis to get down faster (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly that too but um yeah i mean it was it was such a great game because it was like an opportunity that you always talk about as a kid right i love to play for Alabama or against Alabama yeah. and you know Nick Saban you know his his legacy his uh coaching career yeah. speaks for itself yeah. so it's always amazing to go against up a guy like that oh, for and sure. then all like I said Landon Collins all the great players they have Mari Cooper Derek Henry yep you know um she's a little the quarterback name what was that quarterback uh, name? Blake Sims yep Sims yeah yep, Sims, Sims and yep. then uh, all the other guys I mean Cyrus Jones and then you know, the list goes on Eddie Jackson the list goes on with unbelievable players that they had at that time and continue to have yeah and um yeah I mean this I remember just going into that three to four weeks getting ready to play that game because of you know the bowl season yeah um just all the hype they were getting yeah. and you know watching them on film I mean you know they you get the hype how many times you really see them is ESPN highlights you're like yep. any other team you're not yep. playing them you know this season or in their conference you're really not looking at their film mm-hmm. but really when we start looking at their film and breaking it down and we like oh good luck if they can play with us yeah you know, I mean, you got to be luck. confident, right? Yeah. I mean, of course, but not just in ourselves, but we saw a lot of things. We saw a few things that we were really good at that they struggled at. Sure. For example, we wanted to get the ball on the edge to run game because they have two unbelievable great guys in the middle, and we wanted to get those big guys running. Ashawn, Ashawn Robinson, yep. and Jared Reed was the two interior guys. Were unbelievable. I'm talking about not moving on double teams. Great guys. Both end up being first round draft picks. You know, a year back, uh, back to back. Yeah. And we wanted to get these guys tired. You know, we mm-hmm. wanted to get these guys running sideline to sideline. So then, you know, the plays that we finally got to the fourth quarter and we bust that thing up the middle, they were just too gassed to, yeah. To, yeah, yeah. to pretty much keep up. And other things like taking shots downfield and then our defense, I can't 100% tell you what our defense game plan was, but it worked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I yeah. remember watching 
in practice. Now I wasn't running scout team because I was a quarterback at this time. I wasn't sure. running scout team. So I'm watching the defense and their operation as they go against the two offense on scout team. And it was one in particular play that I remember like it was yesterday. When our one of our really good pass rushers, a guy named Steve Miller, number 88 yeah, defensive yeah, yeah. end, yep. dropped into freaking coverage. And I'm like, why is he dropping into coverage? No, he needs to go get the quarterback. Yeah. And he and uh, so I was scouting him some days, you know, the defensive coach said, hey, throw it to this guy. Throw it to like, they throw it to this. If this is a slant backside in this formation, they always throw this. Throw it back there. I don't care what the coverage is. Throw it back there. And it was one of those type of situations yeah. that Steve was dropping into coverage in that window to discourage that throw. Sure. And Steve just kept getting close. He kept getting close all week. I mean, Stephen Collier was a quarterback throwing yep. it, and he just waiting on Steve to get out the way. Boom, hitting him every time, hitting him every time. And it was for big plays. I mean, these were like third down conversion plays to keep their drive alive. So I'm just like, that ain't going to work, that ain't going to work, that ain't going to work. Lo and behold, yep. in the game, yep. the exact it. situation, man, Housed it was – Three, it was three. It was a three by one set. So one receiver. It was like third. No, it was actually second and medium. And I know, I guess that part of the field they like to throw this concept. And Steve Miller dropped into coverage. Darren Lee fired from the other side. Quarterback tried to throw a hot. Steve Miller right there catches and not just catches it. Take it to the house. <laughs> Oust it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I went it. crazy on no, the side. No, no, that play was off. <laughs> crazy. That's I'm like I was really, I was, you know. Oh, yeah. I was like, this ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. I'll never have it work, and it worked. That's Ran so it one time in the game, and it worked. That's Touchdown. so fantastic. So. You know, and it's awesome hearing you say that stuff because you know, as a fan, I was sitting there watching, and I think everything I could probably do a little bit better. And uh, but you're watching it, you see the chess piece, you see you see all the players moving. You can kind of understand some basic coverage stuff, yeah, but not to the level that a, like an actual player was. So hear <laughs> yeah. you saying that, yeah, no, it's like oh man, that was all part of a design. Like he just happened, just in, he didn't just happen to be there. Yeah, like, he it didn't. Was, yeah, they it didn't was just, all right. They didn't just say hey, let's hope this play works. Let's call it right here. No, it's a lot of film study goes on to yeah. things like that, tendencies and stuff like that. And one of the things that I do as a quarterback. Um, because I know, I mean, I watch a lot of film on guys if I'm getting ready to play a team. I watch a lot of film. I'm talking about from a defense alignment, which hand they putting down versus certain, and anticipating if they're dropping or they're slanting or they're doing certain things to help with, you know, my read or in the run game or to check a play, maybe a blitz is coming. So it's really detailed when it comes to breaking down film and, and looking for that one nugget that's going to help you have success yeah. on that maybe one play of the game. Yeah, yeah. But in football, you never know. That might be the game-changing play. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. just – the aspect of watching film and just really studying your opponent and, yeah. you know, understanding it's a game within the game. And one thing our coach used to say on the offensive side of the ball, hey, be one and on every snap. You know, every snap is his own game. You know, every snap has a purpose. Clearly you want to score every time you snap the ball. Mm -hmm. sure. But, you know, every snap has a purpose. Let's do this, let's do that. So you try to prepare for every situation, yeah. you know, versus every look imaginable that this team has presented over X amount of games you've watched. Yeah, that's crazy, man. And I was talking about my wife to my wife about this, you know, uh, obviously, Saturday we had the Wisconsin game. It was a big game. And then it's like uh, Jimmy Leonard, you know, their defensive coordinator. I mean, he's a great dude. Like, yeah. stud. Wisconsin's got one of the best defenses in the country consistently for a very long time. And, and I'll tell you why. We'll go for it. Because they, they don't play great talent on the other side of the division. Yeah. So well, their sure, numbers, yeah. their numbers are always. Yes, always. Like when we played them, put up 59-0. They were the number one statistically defense yeah. in the country. And, like, another thing, we watched yep. film, we were like, wait, what? They're number one? Because they – Yeah. Well, and this guy can throw uh, 70 yards. Yeah, but then, no offense, I mean, they're, they're, um, yeah, you know, they're playing Minnesota. They're playing, like, you know, Michigan State. And, yeah. North like, what one of the greatest teams, Illinois. offensive teams, one of the greatest offensive teams. So, they're getting yeah. these guys who average 20 points a game. You know, 300 yards of offense, and you stop them, you hold them to less than 300. Yeah. Look, like you had a great game. No, they're not designed to put up points like Ohio State. Yeah. Only time I think a defense is oppressive to me, if you're holding a team like Ohio State or Indiana. Indiana always been a, <clears throat> a high-flying offense, just like Ohio State. Yep. I mean, that's why they went to go get, you know, Wilson, uh, the head coach, to be the coordinator here. And uh, that was some things and when it comes to play calling. Yeah. Every year when I was in school, it was a dogfight except one year with Indiana because they can score points just as fast as we could. So when teams hold Ohio State or Indiana mm -hmm. to below average numbers, down the line, you got to be careful. That's a good defense. Oh, for sure, for but, sure. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's tough. <laughs> so. It's funny, though, because like, we're talking about like just the mental prep that goes into that. You know, I'm sitting here watching the game, and, you know, you got your checks and your rechecks, and, you know, what are they showing? Okay, and the pre-snap movement and all that stuff. And I'm telling my wife, I'm like, 
this is why Ryan Day and that staff gets paid what they get paid because they're like it still blows my mind like I can't even think about it like I'm in this set they're in that set okay let's switch or let's not even switch but let's let's switch the play and it's just like man the way that they know that stuff it's just like <laughs> It, it, seems, it seems crazy to think that this guy's going to flip like that and within 20 seconds and they got something different cooked up. And it's just like it just shows the prep that they go into every yep. game. It's reps, the, man. Yeah, it's just, yeah. The, it's just the preps. This is a preparation, man. It's just like, you know, I know with college, you know, it's a lot of check, check plays, which means pretty much, you know, the teams will run up to, and not just Ohio State, teams will run up to a line of scrimmage, get in the formation, yep. and maybe get a fake signal to indicate, see what the defensive structure is. Yep. And then they look to the sideline to get the play. Yep. So now the guys from up top, okay, hey, they in one hot. This would be a great chance to throw a go ball to Marvin Harrison yep. Jr. Or, hey, yep. they in two hot. Man, one less guy in the box, around the box, let's run the ball. Things like that. Mm -hmm. Or what type of leverage and things like that. Every yeah. Because every, yeah, every part of the field is its own game. Yeah. And defense is usually major in two to three things in each part. So you got pretty much when the game is kicked off, so yeah, let's say the game's kicked off, touchback balls on 25, they got to be usually in their base defense, trying to keep everything in front of them and things like that. And then you probably move to the fringe area, which is right on the edge of like getting a field goal, yeah. which is probably in college, maybe the opponent's 35 to maybe say, yeah. the opponent's 45, somewhere around there. And they want to play a little more aggressive to kick, get you out of field goal range, right? Yeah, sure. And then clearly the red zone is a whole different animal. It's yeah. own game plan itself on top of third downs and they're their own game plan, mm. right? So we already know if it's third and six, right? I already know the two defenses that we might see and I already know the four calls we might have. Okay. So it gets to a point where me, especially being around a guy like Phillip <clears throat> Rivers with the Chargers, where if in my headset, because the play calls come to your headset, when I hear an offensive coordinator giving me the personnel and give me the formation, I probably can finish the play. Yeah. Because knowing the down and distance. Sure. Hey, we already, you know, he called this play. He might give you two or three plays in that one play, and, and they all for the two or three coverages or looks that they give in this situation. Sure. You know, so that's where the checks come. That's where the communication line of scrimmage come from, and that's where just studying your game plan, studying their game plans, watching film, that all comes in handy when you want to play fast. Yeah. You know, so. I love it, man. Cardell Jones breaking it down for me. Dude. <laughs> I don't think it gets any better than that. It's awesome yeah. to hear all that stuff behind, you know, behind the you scenes know? stuff. It's, you don't it, know that unless yeah. you're on the team or talk to somebody that's been on the team. It's cool. Oh yeah, exactly. of course, of course. And then like I have, so I, I train a few quarterbacks now here in Columbus, local high school guys who are doing really well. Okay. And um, you know, sometimes I bring up some of my film and just just show them about operating the line of scrimmage. Or one thing that I really stressed on these guys in the very beginning was pre-snap reads. Right. I'm like, I don't I don't know their system as far as what they're running, but I want to get their eyes in the right place. Right. So pretty snap read just the very beginning. I say every time I walk into the stadium, guys, I find the play clock. Yeah. On each side of the field when I'm going yeah. to the right, I'm going to the left. I find a play clock because I know where I want to look. Yeah. First I break the huddle, I look at the play clock. See how much time I got to operate with. Sure. If we got a double play, if we got a triple play, if looks, if I know I'm playing a big defense, I like to disguise or rotate late. Play clock is going to be your best yep. friend. Yep. You know, when, when, you know, time to operate. Then I find the boundary safety. And then most of the time, and especially at high school at their level, they're going to tell you everything you need yeah. because the hashes are so wide. So, for example, if a boundary safety, we got the ball on the right hash and the boundary safety is off the hash, you know, there's no way he's going to rotate to the middle of the field because the, the hash are too wide. So he's so far away from it. So I'm like, hey, guys, okay, start there. We got some type of two-high structure. And then we started going through my other preparations to start to think, which, okay, what type of two-high structure? You got yeah. four, six, eight, two, you know, man, things like that. Yeah. So just helping these guys break these things down, and, I, and I'm so excited for these guys <laughs> to get to the next level, you know, in college because they're going to be so ahead. I mean, I don't yeah, know yeah. how many guys are getting, you know, in-depth training and detail to and attention to detail as I give these guys, and it's really helping and translating their game. But just – Operating the line of scrimmage, man, is, is so big, and it's come from all from film study. Mm -hmm. That's all I love it. This is a, this is a very crazy <laughs> podcast. Ever. I apologize. <laughs> We're not getting into hunting too much, but <laughs> there's one thing I love more than killing deer, and it's Ohio State football, and he's explaining <laughs> it to me. And so it's great, man. It's great. All right, everyone. We need to take a quick break from our conversation with Cardell to thank our show sponsor, Toby Burdett, with Burdett Taxidermy and Legends Big Game Recovery. You know, as hunters, we always strive to make the best shot possible, but sometimes things just happen. If you're in Ohio or the surrounding states and you find yourself in a situation where you need help tracking, give him a call at 740-281-6435. Thank you, everyone. Good luck this hunting season. Now let's jump back into the conversation. 
Um, let's dive into that a little bit. So obviously that is a mental struggle, fast pace, a lot of mental reps. You had talked about it a little bit too before we really got started is, um, you know, your hunting experience and kind of not only hunting, but he's like blowing up razors and all sorts of cool <laughs> stuff too. So I, I got into outdoor stuff a lot. So yeah. <laughs> so let's dive into that, man, because I think, you know, some of our audience is going to love the football talk. I loved it. Uh, and some of, I want to see what makes you different too. Right. So, um, let's dive into, let's just dive into outdoor stuff. Look, yeah. I know you're yeah, into yeah. the razors and the, and the, you know, the quads and everything. Mm-hmm. And then we'll dive into the, the, the Schlegel talk and, and some of the hunting talk. Yeah. So, what got you into the, like the razors? Because you're up, you're from like the. I'm from factory. Cleveland. Cleveland, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. inner city Cleveland. No, I was gonna no, say no trails riding up there. Exactly. Um, honestly, I think because of my buddies here outside of football, my buddy Eric Norman, my buddy Eric Virgin, Brad Jones, uh, Gary Scott, uh, Chad Gillespie, all my guys here who I hang with, pretty much most of my time here. But I'm not doing you know running around the city doing sure. stupid stuff. Um, you know they grew up doing these things, right? Okay. They from the west side of Columbus. And it, um, and I know my buddy Eric, he raced growing up and, um, you know, so he was always into these things. So I bought a four wheeler before I even knew how to ride it. And I bought a Honda 450 TRX okay. before yeah. I even know yeah. how to ride it. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about never even been on one, but you know, they had one, it was interesting. They like talk the talk. So, you know, he really taught me how to ride and like, man, we got to go out, hit the trails. Then. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, Okay. And then, like, you can tell a guy when he's a beginner on all that stuff because I go get the full outfit decked out. I mean, helmet and goggles, uh, sure. you know, that's a neat. But I yeah. want to go get riding boots. I want to go get pants. I want to go get the jersey. He's My out there looking like Ryan Villapoto or something. Right. And everybody and I, we pull up and like, everybody else just, like, you know, t-shirt, shirt t-shirt. helmet. Yeah, shirt <laughs> helmet. Some guys no shirt. Just shorts, shoes. And I'm just like, okay. I'm that guy now. Okay. Yeah, I'm that okay. guy. And everything is matching. Everything is matching my oh, bike and everything. To. You got yep. to. So I'm just like, Jesus Christ, I feel like <laughs> the biggest douchebag in the world. <laughs> uh, so it got into that stuff, and then it just grew more and more from there. I think within another year, I went from a 450 to a 700 Raptor. And then I want to say uh, maybe a six or seven months after that, I got the new Razor XP at the time. Yep. And then, you know, right <laughs> after that, I had too many issues with that thing. Got rid of it within a year. Rather than that, I ended up getting a, another Raptor 700, and then I ended up getting a uh, recently, which is my baby. I love the Dev Nine an Extreme Maverick oh, 2021 yeah. Turbo. It's freaking sick. And, and then, that's a, is that Can Am? Can Am. Yep. Yes, Can Am. And then I ended up getting uh, recently a dirt bike, a 450 uh, from Yamaha uh, as well. So I love the outdoor this stuff, guy. man. I love riding. And then you know all my buddies, they got the like a Can Am Renegade 1000. My buddy got a. Uh, another buddy just got a, a Maverick, and then another buddy got an Outlander 1000. So we got a yeah, great yeah. group of guys we go riding with, and they got me into all this outdoor stuff. You know, when it comes to riding, when it comes to you know shooting long range, when it comes to hunting, you yeah. know, and um, just to you know, you never know until you try it. Oh, for sure. Right? So for it's sure. funny because my buddies back home in Cleveland, they see me do some of this stuff in the beginning. They're like, "What the hell are you doing? Like, <laughs> you got to ride? Like, what? Why you got all that mud on you? You're gross." And I was just like, "Guys, I said the same. I said the same thing. Yeah, yeah. They'll knock it till you try it. Oh, yeah, for so, sure. Trying to get them into some of the things, and then the funniest thing, kind of getting into the hunting world of all of that stuff. You know, I was like, "Why would I eat a deer? I'm not eating a deer. He yeah, must yeah. be crazy. Oh, it tastes like this. it's too good." And then other thing, I mean, they're on the extreme of like hunting and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I love deer now and, you know, and I tell my buddies about it back home. Like I said, they're so removed oh, from yeah, it because, yeah. you know, it's a different lifestyle. It's not, exactly. You know, it's just exactly. no areas to hunt, to ride and things like that mm-hmm. in Cleveland. I'm pretty sure they attempt to do it. Sure. But uh, <laughs> I gave them some summer sausage before. It. Oh, there and you then go. I, I gave them some. Uh, then we had like there was over in my place, honestly, two years ago. And I, and I had deer chili and I didn't tell there them it was yeah. deer and deer. And they killing it. They loving it. I was like, like, what is that? Bambi. Is that, I'm like, I showed them the picture. I was like, deer I killed. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, my God. So That's awesome, man. I think that's kind of how I got my first start. I think it was uh, chili, late chili meat. That's a turkey called blast off behind us there. <laughs> um, and we're, it's, we're conveniently located right next to the Trekkers, too, man. There's nothing better than a smoked yeah. loin. I yeah. mean, we have to get him hooked up on one of these Predator bikes, though. He likes the extreme. Yeah. Predator have, bike. You'll check you that bad out. It's an e-bike. Uh, e-bike. Uh, we started selling those e-bikes with the uh, big fat tires on them. Let me check it out. They go like 30. That's pretty fast for a bicycle. <laughs> yeah. Quiet, too, so you can sneak in if you're going hunting or something. Yeah. You sneak in and you don't have 
big engine, you know. Maybe like a four wheeler or something like that. Yeah. Room. It's not the, like you could still ride your dirt bike in, but this thing doesn't have its electric motor, so no, that's good. It's super quiet. 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 That's yeah, good for sure. Yeah. But no, that's funny though because like like you said though, man, a lot of people, and I'm glad you touched on that. Like you either love it or you hate it. I think I like a lot of people that don't want to eat deer meat. Like my stepmom is a perfect example. Um, you know, actually, funny enough, the the guy that's let me hunt his property this year, he's like, no, nah, I don't want to eat. No, 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 no. Like not for me, not for me. I'm like. Mm-hmm. But you set them up good, though. You set them up with a the summer sausage, and that's yeah. like the gateway to entry, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you do sure. a little summer sausage with a cracker and some cheese, and you know, people don't even know the difference, and it's just like, it's good. Or, it. or jerky. Jerky's a good one, too. Yeah. Like, getting on the jerky side. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, there's nothing better than a backstrap. Like, if someone says they don't like deer, they just haven't had it right. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? I, like, I, the I, same thing. I say the same thing. And then, like, just to, not just having the deer to eat, because I, I do. Hunt. I don't hunt for sport. Yeah, you know I'm not like, oh man, I gotta get this ten point. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I love to get a big buck. Oh sure. But I'm like, I get meat. Like my first hunt, like we were talking about Swago earlier, he already got a, a doe down. Yeah, he's getting the meat. Yeah. Mm. So my first hunt, I, I didn't want the meat. I wanted to get it. I wanted to get this deer down immediately, yeah. nice size buck or doe. I don't care for the most part to get the meat for however long I need yeah, to have yeah. it. You exactly. know. And then, then I'll start sitting. Yep. Then, I'll, then I wouldn't mind. Then I let stuff walk. Then I sit for hours and things like that. But if I yeah. see a deer, my first five minutes, I'm done hunting there. Smoke, oh, yeah. I'm smoking it. I'm getting mm-hmm. out of there. Yep. You know, but other than that, I wait for I wait for something that's, you know, to brag to my buddies about. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to, <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with getting some antlers on the wall. I know you yep. can't eat them, but, man, it's yeah. still a hell of a time. Um, and you're talking right at Ben's Alley, too. We were, obviously, season just opened up on Saturday. And, uh you know it, just shaking that rust off getting out there and kind of getting the rust sick i'm like it's a doe hunt man like it's mm. going to be a doe hunt like that's what i want to get down and then like and then we can sit and then we can pass on deer like you were saying yeah. we can pass on that little buck or we can pass on that uh, yeah. like, do i shoot him do i not shoot him okay probably not and then you start getting to that later season where things kind of ramp up a little bit more especially in november yeah it's uh but no you i'm, I'm glad you said that though because you know i think and we have talked about this before too, but like in this world, and we kind of mentioned it earlier, I think the Joe Rogan has really like kind of revolutionized the way people are looking at wild game meat. Mm-hmm. You know, especially some guy that's like, you know, the pinnacle of fitness. I mean, he, that dude is a BA. I mean, he is just always kicking ass. And, you know, normalizing hunting and normalizing yeah. like wild game procurement. And like, you know, how much pride did you have when you ate that chili and you were like, I, I shot that. I, shot this. I provided yeah. that. Like, from the uh, ground up, I know where that came from. Yeah, it, it was funny. Uh, I mean, I was I was pretty happy because then like I, I'm not a big cook myself anyway. Yeah. So I mean, getting my buddy's recipes and letting it, all this stuff, so I, it was pretty cool for me. That was a great experience. But like you said, it was the fact that you know I provided this in my freezer yeah. to a certain point, and I got buddies that's laughing. So yeah, I can go get that same thing in aisle three. Yeah. <laughs> like, and laughing and things like that. But I'm just like, I probably should. I'm like, it's just a different feeling. Yeah. When you know, I'm like. Now and I got the skill if you know if all three ain't there I can go get some meat. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, yeah. So well, look, especially uh, I mean, just look at COVID as an example. I mean, <laughs> how much meat was left on a shelf? None. Yeah. yeah. Toilet paper, milk, gone. Like, well, the all price, the, and the price, price too, going up and right. everything. It's it's just, and the meat's cleaner when you get it yourself. Yeah. It's not something that's been stuck with a bunch of hormones. Exactly. You've been fed a bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah. It's clean. It's good. And like like what we talked about earlier before we actually started. Like you being an athlete, some guys might want to go cleaner on the food mm-hmm. and go oh, that yeah. route and start harvesting their own, whether it be elk, deer, whatever the case may be. Yeah, I wish it was elk here in Ohio because, man, elk is so freaking good. Man, I had it once, it's and I've yeah. been trying to get out west to do an elk hunt ever since I had elk. I'll help you with that. You know, yeah, because that was like unbelievable how lean it was. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, you always hear stories about oh, this is lean and this is uh, you can tell. Like, how can you tell? Yeah. You can tell. Oh, for sure. You can tell. Oh, you know, sure. you can tell for sure, which is crazy. It's like, okay, yeah, still it tastes like a burger if I'm eating it, but it's just like the texture is yeah. a little bit different that makes it more craveable. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. And uh, we had talked about, like, athletes and wanting to be peak performance. Um, you know you know, Bo Nickel, uh, Penn State, legendary wrestler. I think he's, oh, quite, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's yeah. like UFC now. Yeah. Uh, one of our buddies that we had on the podcast, Bo uh, Martonic, had him on. He lives in the Pete, uh, Pittsburgh area, I want to say. But had Bo – had uh, – Bo Nickel on, and he got to do an elk hunt. Mm-hmm. And he's like, as an athlete and as a UFC fighter, like I need to know exactly what I'm putting in my body is going to give me the max potential that I can mm-hmm. every time. 
and he had some family and stuff out there and i think he's going to start like guiding hunts and stuff now oh that's gonna be pretty cool yeah so it's like you know out in colorado they did like a private a private hunt and it's like here's this athlete he was like pinnacle of the wrestling i don't know if you mm-hmm. remember him like him and miles you know miles, remember miles martin on uh Iowa I, state no uh-uh. about a couple of years ago at this point but um you know those guys were always battling he's always won he's a three-time national champion it's just like it doesn't get any higher than that guy right yeah. and then here he is i think his only loss was two miles but um just a stud and uh you know here's this athlete you know procuring his own meat and mm-hmm. again knowing where his food comes from and and making a you know making a hobby out of it can yeah. you hunt oak in pennsylvania i want to say i know that i know they have them but i i don't know if I it's like i a think draw. it's a lottery draw okay i feel okay. like kentucky's the same way too kentucky's the same way too but um i think like for you especially man like finding some place even if it's just on a ranch you know a rifle hunt or whatever yeah i know you, you said you talked about doing some long range shooting yeah so i have a i have a buddy down in jackson county ted frazier who's actually the sheriff of jackson county okay um has a farm and a, and a lot of um land i don't know the exact number of acres and things sure. like that where actually last year you know it was my first time getting out hunting deer gun season oh okay. you know for that brief time in gun season here in ohio and um actually i got my 350 legend from here yeah yeah yeah, yeah i got cool. my 350 legend from here so i took out the 350 legend had a loop old scope on it and uh, i dropped the deer now this gun this bullet is rated for at like max like 225 mm-hmm. knock down whatever kill shot things like that i dropped this freaking deer at 325 that's awesome. Dropped it. Like, That's awesome. Dropped it. No more steps. And I'm just like, what just happened? Yeah. He done smoked that thing. But, yeah, I mean, I would love. So, he, here, he is the only place that I go to here in Ohio where, you know, I'll feel comfortable taking a shot like yeah. that because yeah. of the space. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> which was awesome. But, yeah, I would love, like, with Elk, you know, getting out west. You know, clearly, I, would, I mean, I wouldn't mind taking a bow. But me personally, I would love it to do with a rifle oh yeah i mean especially if you just want to think it's like there's some western hunts that can be really challenging right it it can be as it can be as challenging as you want it to be where it's just like grueling 10-day backpack in Mm -hmm. middle of nowhere 40 miles i mean like andrew 40 miles from like the closest town like you're out there or there's the other option where it's like you're a little bit more guided a little bit kind of dabbing your toes wet there's elevation you have to get used to there's Mm -hmm. all the whole other parameters that you're gonna have to get used to you know different rifles different calibers and so it's like you, you can make it as difficult or as easy as you want it to be and i think man for for, for like you I'd, I'd find like a guide service that like over the oh no for over, sure over the counter that's what, no that's the that's the that's the goal me and my buddy mitch here um who actually you know he had the elk yeah. the one i had it um and he's a big outdoor guy he actually trains uh, uh what is it uh, I think it's Christian Canine Academy. He actually trains dogs okay. and things like that. So he's always been a big outdoor guy and, and adventurous type guy. So we, we've been talking about the last probably about a year or so. Yeah. Just got to find time in both of our schedule to make it oh, for sure. you know, feasible for us both, either something like in Montana or Wyoming. Yeah. You know, or even, I mean, I, I'm not opposed to going to Colorado either, but le- kind of a guided yeah. backpack, maybe yeah. week long thing. Sure. And then uh, what's uh, those guys they always go to? What's that ranch in Utah? No, uh, like, who, Kev, who? Kevin, like Kevin and, and Todd. Oh, and all. Um, you asked me too fast. I can't remember the name of it. In Utah. Oh, Deseret. Deseret. That's Deseret. It. So yeah. more of like a refined, higher yep. class, like yep. resort kind of thing. Not resort, I guess, but just a nicer experience, you know yeah. what I mean, from a guided perspective. <clears throat> and they got some big bulls down there, man. Yep. Oh, Kevin got his first one. Kevin's our, our operations officer. Mm-hmm. And um, he got his first one. Was it last year? Uh, yeah. Last? last Maybe two years. Two years ago? Yeah. I want to say, because I remember, I mean, that's that was his first time out there with a rifle. 300-some yeah. yards, I think he said. So nice. the, the guide is the key. If yeah. you, oh, you sure. want to make sure you're successful, the first time being out there especially, yeah. having someone there that's there all the time and just guiding people all the oh, time. Oh, for sure. It's no, a, that, that's definitely the go. So yep. I got a buddy up in Cleveland as well, um, Tony, who just got back last year from a, uh, I think they called Kodiak Bears, yeah. the black and brown ones. Okay, Kodiak mm-hmm. Bears. Um, in Alaska, did a bear hunt, guided out there and stuff like that, which was pretty cool. He sent me that pictures. And he's, he smoked something at a little over 800 yards away, wow. 800 yards away as this thing was feeding, like getting water out the, uh, out of one of the lakes or whatever. Yeah. Um, with a uh, six millimeter, 6.5, 6.5. Cream. Oh, cream crazy. Yeah, yeah. 6.5 cream. And smoked this thing. Mm. And then, you know, backpacking. Yep. Like, flew in, had to drive over four hours to the place. Yeah. 
backpacked up in the mountains. I mean, they was hiking roughly 12 miles a day, tracking and stuff yeah. like that for 13 days yeah, that's crazy, and things yeah. like that. So I'm talking about, you know, you, you bring in your own food, you bring in your own cooking stuff mm-hmm. and things like that. And then my main thing, I was like, man, I was like, as you camping in this tent, like real life, small tent, I was like, what if a grizzly bear went right up on you? And yeah. He's like, he's like, He's like, my 44 Magnum was only at all. Oh, time. yeah, dude. Yeah, no so doubt. Was like, Jesus that little Christ. nylon tent ain't going to keep you safe. No. Yeah, exactly. That's a whole other world, man. I, You know, we had joked a little bit. You know, they were, they were seeing some black bears, like, here in Ohio mm-hmm. from the eastern side as they're kind of coming over. We had joked a little bit, man. It's going to make those uh, stick cracks and the middle of the, yeah. you know, like, when we start to get the population here and you're oh, walking out sure. to the whitetail woods yeah. and you hear that stick crack or, you know, that you're not the biggest <laughs> yeah. thing in the – no, that's uh, you're absolutely right, man. We had a, I got a buddy with property down in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Yeah. And he had just got it two years ago, August. And he put some money into it, renovated and get ready to Airbnb it out and things like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Right during prime season for that stuff down there. And right when he's done doing that stuff, a black bear started to show up. <laughs> so tried to get in his house, got scratch yeah. marks on the door, got into his car, destroyed his car. So he was like, man, you guys can come out here and kill this bear. So we got our hunt license for it and everything like that. And, you know, um, That's awesome. that thing, it was like the first night we were there. And my buddies, they play too much. They choke around 24-7. So I'm asleep. Like, we hang out because Gallenberg, I've never been to Gallenberg. None of us yeah. at this point. It was really fun. So we hang out. We get back around, like, midnight. We hang around the cabin. The cabin was pretty cool. And then, like, about 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm, like, laying down or whatever. I'm like, whatever. And then they come get me from downstairs. Like, Cardell, the bear is here. The bear is here. I'm like, what? So like, no, the bear here, I'm thinking they're joking. Yeah, yeah. I come upstairs, like the bear's at the door. <laughs> it's at the freaking door. And I show you guys pictures when you get up camera, the thing's yeah. at the door. <laughs> so I like, what the hell? So I go grab my gun. And it's like, no, don't shoot it, because we couldn't shoot it at that time. Oh, yeah. There, I think the rules were like, you, you can shoot it if they come into your house or or like something crazy or about yeah, the yeah. tire or anything like that. So, but it, it was, for the most part, it was, you know, I wouldn't say scary, but yeah. it was... The bear was like, wasn't. Got your heart pumping. Yeah, I mean, I was, no, no, I was scared, but the bear like was yeah. just frantic, right? So yeah. like, you know, when it got off the porch and we came outside, it kind of ran and it climbed. When I say it climbed this tree so fast, dude, they're fast, man. I was just like, like galloping up this thing and got up to like 12 feet, like in two seconds. So we're looking. I got like, you know, I got light on, like I'm flashing and just like looking at it. And you just see his freaking eyes, and I'm just like, oh my god, it's a freaking bear. Yeah, like I'm out of yeah. here. Especially from a kid from Cleveland, right? Never seen a bear. I'm just right. like, you ain't never gonna see anything like exactly, that. Exactly, man. So yeah, that was pretty intense. But yeah, I don't want to come across one of those bears again. So Dude, you as you like, talk about, they're coming, you know, over here. Yeah. I don't know. I'm Especially like, down there by the river in Jackson County, I heard. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, though. No, I'm, mean, I'm excited to get him here, though, man. Honestly, though, because like we joke about them, like you know, we I, you know, I joke about you know going to the woods or whatever, but. <laughs> It's cool to see them kind of rehabilitate, re, um, I guess, well, hab- not habitat, but, you know, kind of reintroduced into, like, this area again. To like resurface. To yeah, yeah, like, to kind of resurface and come, because you know that they were everywhere before we all started taking over everything. But yeah. That's exciting. He's pulling up that picture right you, now. You think that's, you think it's, you, I mean, you think about how fast the berries climb up the tree. And think about how fast a grizzly is out west. Oh, yeah, dude. And they're Ten quiet. Times. Did you see the video of uh, Newcomb when they were training with the bear spray? And they put that grizzly target yeah, on the RC yeah. car? Yeah. And that, R- dude, he turned around and the RC car was on him. Like, Cardell, that That's RC car was to the bows, like, probably 25, 30 feet. He turned around to whether or not he's going to get his pistol or get his bear spray. Yeah. And that thing was from me to those... Well, Almost to you, like four or five feet. The craziest like thing is their their pads on their feet. Yeah. Well, they're like stealth mode, going like thirty miles an hour yeah. at you, and you won't even hear them until they're on you. It's ridiculous. Wow. Like, I just pulling that up too. Um, so last week we had the Rut Daniels. Remember, I don't know if you were out there, but the door. look at this bear. It's, <laughs> it's literally. The, it's the door. I love it. Holy. <laughs> And then as I'm looking at more pictures, like, <laughs> we, we like, this is just a glass door. This thing is right up on it. That's crazy, man. Man. And so I he's just, got this bear. He's got like, bear a, too. like a sliding yeah, glass door for people listening. It's like a sliding glass door. And he's door got this. Just pop it it's like literally right in front of him. My sister is down in um, Asheville right now. She's working for the Asheville Taurus baseball team, like a high A. And they got this bear that comes in. It's like, you know, this stadium was built in like the 20s, right? It's, mm-hmm. uh, I think actually, I think the DeWine family owns it, if I'm not mistaken. And um, 
you know, it's right there in Asheville, which is like prime bear country, right? Yeah. And this bear will just like hang out and just like walk around on, on the actual field. Like she was, she sent me a video the other day, like the equipment manager or one of the groundskeeper guys or whatever was out there. And this bear is just chilling, bro. Just What's like, up? Yeah, just like hanging out, like looking for food and like the bleachers and stuff that was dropped. I'm like, she's like, Jordan, this is wild. She's like, I- I'm afraid to take my trash out sometimes. I'm like, she, you're fine. Right. You're fine. But she's like, yeah, man. She's like, Jesus. it's a whole different world. And I mean, it's not that far away either. But I'm excited. I mean, they're cool. Black bears, I, I, if it was like grizzlies and brown bears and stuff, I'd be a little bit more. Because uh, yeah, no, those things, know. you go to the zoo and that's my only time I've ever seen them is at the zoo. Yeah, those things are huge. Huge. No chance. Huge. Yeah, I'm no glad they have that like 15 foot deep <laughs> pit between yeah. us and the. Yeah, no chance. <laughs> so. I, you've done a lot more hunting than I thought you had. I, I quite a. Um, I, mean, I think gun season. I, I got out. I started hunting. I want to say four years ago, and I think I've been out maybe, maybe six, seven times. Maybe, okay. maybe eight. Okay. Maybe no. Jesus Christ! I've probably been out about fifteen times. Now. Oh really? Yeah, I've been out about fifteen times. Because I also had a buddy up in uh, Sandusky, Port Clinton. I've been yeah. up there about three or four times. Then I got a buddy actually, uh, Scent Lock. My okay, buddy, yeah. uh, Pat, who owns Scentlock, um, up, he got a beautiful property up in the uh, upper part of a uh, team up north, upper part of freaking Michigan. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, about, about a six hours from here. I've been up there a few times, which, I mean, his property, I don't know how big it is, can't remember, but he got over, you know, 100 tree stands and ground Okay, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure so, something like that does. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then down in Jackson. We're, we're sitting right here by their product. Right. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So they're down That's in awesome. Jackson, and then yeah. Um, yeah, a few places around here in Columbus. But yeah, I actually been on a lot. Now that I think about it. That's Schlegel's awesome. property. So yeah, we're trying to get down to Schlegel's. He um, he's doing some crazy shit. He's uh, was it like working out and then like shooting bows. And he's, yeah. Like, he's brought all of his like deadlifting stuff out there. Of course, the man's got deadlift every day he gets. And um, he's like, you come out and shoot, man. I'm like, if yeah. you want me to do that. No, like right. I'll shoot, bro, yeah. but yeah. I'm, I'm not repping, you know, five for five, and then yeah, right. shooting and a bow a, 40, 50 yards. Right, and then pull a ninety pound bow back. Get out of here. Yeah, he's crazy. He came in. Uh, we set him up with his. Uh, once he got RX seven. Yeah, he got, he got the, the RX seven. Yeah, the yeah. RX seven carbon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah. newest hey, what, Yeah, so new as of what last year or two years? Yeah, ago? it was last year's model. That uh, well, yeah. yeah, the carbon whatever. Yeah, it's an RX seven. I think he got the ultra. The ultra, got, yep. maybe. Okay. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we set him up with that. I think that one that we had was 70 pounds. Bro, I'm telling you what. Like, I pulled a 70 pound boat back. It, and I get it back. Like, it's not it's not hard for me. This dude, he could have pulled that thing back with one finger. <laughs> like, he's like, what, just like I'm, you know, he's Jack. Yeah. And he's just like smoking it. And then he mm-hmm. gave uh, Brian Peters, who we'll, we'll have him on the podcast before too long, too. But. Um, Brian's like really big with the Sornex guys and like mm-hmm. the old outdoor weightlifting equipment and stuff. And um, he gave him his old bow, which I can't, I can't think of the name of the top of my head. It was a Hoyt as well, but yeah. yeah, I wanted to say Defiant, but that's probably not right. I think it was like Altus or something like that. It's the it's the old uh, aluminum bow before yeah. they came out with the the ones that have the Ventum. Yeah, it's the one before the Venom. Yep, yep. So um, you're shooting a Hoyt? Yes, I am. You have like you probably have like a 40 inch draw length, don't you? No, I am 32 and a half. 32 and a half? 32 and a half. So he's yeah. smoking it. He's getting some crazy speeds, I bet you. Mm-hmm. What, what's your setup looking like right now? Do you know off the top of your head? I do not know off the top of my head. That's a great question. Actually, Slago helped me set it up last year. Yep. Um, but but you, you guys came here, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we got some. I think we got some of our hunting gear from here yep. on our way actually down to his property. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we literally did everything in, in one day. Um, and kind of, like I guess I got out and got that deer. Yeah. And then, uh, was, was that uh, your first, uh, was that your first, uh, archery hunt? Yes. Or did you do it? Okay. Yeah. 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 Ooh. I think you may, you it, it, no, I think I did a few more, yeah. but I had, a. that's my first compound. Okay. I had a crossbow. I had oh, a crossbow. Okay. That's what it was. That's my first compound. Okay. So, <laughs> Great story about that. So we done in Slagos property. And this then, is his side of the story. <laughs> yeah. But, but one, I never... I always did the climber. Yep. I always had the climber. I never had to climb up a little ladder to sit on a little chair. Yeah. And I'm just like, he telling me, to, hey, you can take this by that cross this, this creek here. This would be great. And I'm just like, how am I supposed to get up there? <laughs> <laughs> I always did a climber or a ground blind yep. or one of those. I don't know what you call those things. That it's, a, it's a blind, but it's like a house. And you yeah, like kind a, of walk a up box blind. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is my first time about to climb the tree. 
And I'm just like, um, how am I supposed to get up there? And it's like, yeah, the ladder, climb up it. And this thing is like, fuck. <laughs> my feet is at, like, my feet's like at 15 feet. Yeah. Like, easily. Like, yeah, this yeah. is high. Yep. And I'm just like, what's the weight limit on it? Like, I'm trying to find every excuse not, not to, to. Yeah. Thing, right? He's like, no, no, you're good. It's like 300 pounds. So I get to climb and I climb up this thing. And I'm just like, now nah, I get up there, now the, the seat is still like higher than like my last couple of things. So he's like, no, pull yourself up. And I'm just like, I'm about to die. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. fall, I'm gonna die. But finally get up there. We're sitting for about, I'm sitting for about two hours. You know, Slago tell me, hey, it's some crossing, get ready to cross the creek where he was, where he was at. He didn't take a shot. He wanted to see guys come to me. So I'm like, okay, cool. About 40 minutes later, so it's a small doe, small buck, actually, small buck. It's about to come and stuff, and I'm like, okay, cool, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the shot. So, I get ready and draw back. One, you're sitting there, get the point cold. Yeah. That draw ain't that easy. Nah, yeah, at nah. that point. Yeah, and it's not yep. like you're warming up. Yeah, and then I'm drawing, drawing, drawing. And then I can't go back because my elbow's hit the tree. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, shh. Because then I didn't want to stand up either because I was yeah. scared. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, shh. I'm like, finally getting an awkward way to get it all the way drawn. Now I can't get behind a peak site. So I'm trying to eyeball it. <laughs> I'm trying to eyeball this thing. I so I can't get behind a peep site now. I just, I just, I said, fuck it. Like, I let yeah. him go. Miss him right over his back. <laughs> he didn't go anywhere. He, yeah. he, he, he ran know. like and he, Yeah. So now I was like, fuck. Okay, I got to, I ain't got no choice but to stand up. You got to stand up, yep. So it takes me about 10 minutes to stand up. I'm nervous as shit. So I put the bow down. <laughs> you know, okay, how do I need to do this? Okay, I put the bow down, put the hook, stand up, turn around, get it. Start the draw back, got the arrow in, and start the draw back, and I get behind the peep side at this yeah, point, yeah. and I just smoked, I dropped them out. But it, it was a process. Uh, <laughs> then you know, then it dawns on you. I tell them I smoked some, then I let them you know sit or whatever, you know, until dark. Then Slago meets me down. And I'm just like, okay, the fuck, I'm supposed to get down. Yeah, yeah. Now you gotta get down <laughs> in the dark. Get down. So right, that was a tricky part. So I finally get down. It takes about ten minutes. And then um, he's like, oh yeah, you got a nice little one, blah blah blah. And we're talking, we're talking. He's like, okay. Where's your knife? I'm like, knife or what? Yeah, what, where's what you, your knife? Yeah, where's your knife? <laughs> where's oh, you, your gotta, you gotta gut it and you gotta do this before you process it. I was like, I said, I gotta do what? <laughs> gut it? What that mean? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you gotta get the, all the insides out. So, you know, go bad and blah, blah, blah. You can't go too deep because of the, the shit bag or the pit bag, whatever he's saying. And one, I didn't, for one, this is my first time killing deer. Yeah, sure. And I'm just like, I don't even wanna really be by this thing because I'm still <laughs> like, Oh my God! Just killed this. Yep. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So yep. I was just like, man. He's like, okay, get get down there, and take a picture with it. I'm like, for what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to take a picture with it. But he doesn't get down there, and take a picture. He's like, hold his head. I like no, I don't want to hold his head. <laughs> no, so I just squat by him there, take the picture, That's and awesome. then he's telling me to gut it. But he was like, he he ended up gutting it. Oh yeah. He, he opened it, he got it, he get everything gone. I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> And then he's like, okay, well, like, you got to help me carry it now. I was just like, can we, can we go get, like, the four-wheeler or something? I did not yeah. want no parts of touching this thing. And I was just Dude, like, yeah, awesome. it sounds so bad. But clearly, you know, that's my first one. Yeah. And I was just like, oh. yeah, I'm I, like, I'm never hunting again. But You know what the best part is, man? You're going to remember that story. Uh, like, you're going to remember every aspect of that story until you oh, die. Oh, for sure. And yeah. it's like, I can. For sure. <laughs> same thing with me like my first year when i was in high school i'm like it was uh, my old girlfriend's uh dad and he was like a youth hunting um instructor there in somerset and um i won't say his name but y- you know who i'm talking about and uh he uh he's like okay you shot i shot with muzzle loader oh in my first one and uh he's like all right go at it i'm like uh like you see it in the book in your hunter's education class. It ain't the same as just seeing it right there in front oh, of you. Yeah. And then I'm, <laughs> I'm 34 years old, and I still struggle with it sometimes, too. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's just like, okay, it's a lot easier now. But at the same time, it's just like, that's a that's such a big barrier of entry to people, I think, man. Because oh, it's like, sure. it's a, it's not for the fan. I'm, and I say this, and a lot of people listening are probably avid hunters and stuff. But if you're just somebody new to it, man, like it's not for the faint of heart. Like, it's look good at him. to have a mentor. Yeah. <laughs> like in your case, Schlegel, he's yeah. like show you how to do it. All yeah. That oh, stuff. for sure. Yeah. Like, per- mentor is perfect. Yeah, like he just said in the hunter's book. I'm like, what hunter's book? It's a book for this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, he's telling me how to cut it and don't do this. And I'm just, yeah. While well, he's talking, I'm not paying attention. I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just like, yeah. No, his mentor is the guy that like jumps from a tree and stabs a hog with a knife. So. <laughs> yeah, that was Shots. funny. As we're as we're headed out to go 
Honey, his wife Stephanie. Yeah. Um, he goes and you know she made a joke like, yeah, oh, you guys are hunting and, and hiding and up in a tree and shooting a deer while eating and pl-. it's like you, you got soft. You used to hunt hawks with a knife. Just a yeah. knife and go look for him. I, you imagine the kind of woman that takes it. I mean, he, he's a pretty he's a pretty grounded dude. Like yeah. I know, like he comes across like real animated. But when we talk to him, man, it's like oh yeah, faith family. You know, faith family catching the crap out of the Buckeyes, and then like. So he's he's pretty grounded, but man, God bless Stephanie because he's a he's a cool dude, man. He's yeah. one of my favorite people for sure, for sure. I love it. You guys ate you guys eat some that night? Not that night, but um, he got it processed for me. I told him what I wanted, um, and whoever he used was actually pretty good. But I like the processor I used down in Jackson County. Okay, um, I totally forgot her name, but um, they're they're really great when it comes to. Um, I mean, they just know what I like. You know, yeah. I think I've done about four deers down there now, so okay. she, she knows, so it's pretty cool. We have a uh, – there's a, an old, a guy that was on our pro staff team in Chill Coffee. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what highway that was. It, they said Chill Coffee, but, dude, it was like another 30 minutes past Chill okay, Coffee. Okay, yeah, okay, so I don't know how many process, processor, I imagine. Uh, no, this is outfit service. It's oh, okay, outfit okay, okay, okay. Well, I'm going to tell you, though, there's a processor down there that he uses. But he'll have like these, these clients come in from all over different parts of the country, and they'll you know they'll hunt big whitetails in Ohio, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what they want to do. Did that one that you know both of those guys that shot? They didn't they didn't have to worry about processing anything, man. They just took that deer yeah. right into the right into the side by side. Yep. He took it to the processor for him, and they yeah. had I mean they it was like dude, I think what did he say? Like twenty dollars, maybe less than that to gut the thing and have it processed. He's like, it's not, wor- it's not even worth my time. Easy. Like really, like now. We have a couple that we interviewed, Dan and Jackie Wells, and this is something I want to try to get into this year, but actually fulfilling that processing out, like, and he's probably going to turn, like, green just talking about it. But, like, you know, you got your gutting part down, you got to hang it up, and you're working on skinning, you're working on quartering now, you know, you're getting your different pieces of cuts, your different meats. Um, we had the, uh, also, so they do that. Dan and Jackie, that's all they do for their family, man. Like, they eat, like, what they sell? If they haven't bought red meat in years seven wow. eight years yeah well and uh they're over there in tri-valley area like dresden like zanesville area yeah, yeah. and uh that's all they do man they like they hunt and they provide their food for their family and they're they're fr- awesome people yeah awesome they people. don't just do deer either they trap beaver yep. they mm-hmm. every once in a while we eat a raccoon yeah which barbecue is barbecue sandwich yeah i've heard that it's good but He's i'm, I'm kind of like weary about even trying that but yeah, they do a lot of squirrel trash pandas. i'm gonna stay away from things that you have in the trash <laughs> yeah, i don't blame you <laughs> i don't blame you <laughs> i'm skeptical about it too but they said it's good so yeah. i don't know trying it might try it i yeah. don't know but maybe if we hit like it's a zombie pop i try it <laughs> yeah right you know, right I'm yeah try it for fun. but i guess i brought them up too because they're uh he's like you know if you get something down man just give me a call he's like i'll walk yep. you through the process and we'll teach you like how to actually do it right and um he's a uh history teacher professor down at duke oh, he nice. does like dumb yeah. duke and then like does remote learning and stuff for him and stuff but he's super into like all the american stuff and the old school american traditions like in the 1800s and yeah. like, how things were done back in the day when people were settling the west and stuff and he's a cool dude man that's pretty sweet that's pretty sweet I, yeah he ain't cardell ain't skinning and quartering out well, never yeah. know I'm you okay. might do it you, you try it yeah, I, you know what? I'm, I may try it, but I'm okay. We need you I said at the beginning, don't knock it till you try it. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I may try it, but, you know, I just remember the first time I took the deer to the processor down in Jackson, uh, and I forgot Anna's shop call. I just heard the name. And this knife was so sharp. Like, they were just talking to me. Oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And the deer head was off in two seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're quick about it. They don't mess around with it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how you want it? Pow, for the hell. Where you want this? this what you want in the summer sauce? Pow, just cut. Guys, I text you. I gotta go. <laughs> what's your fa- What's your favorite part? I, you know what? I never had the back shot. I always give them away. So oh, I, I just get the ground. I get grounded up. I get probably about two to three pounds of ground. Um, then I ask my buddies all what they want, and then um, and I do the summer sausage and then um, the uh, meat sticks. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I like back it sticks, for yeah, yeah just Maybe. for little snacks and things like that. Then like I did the chili before. I did uh, burgers before. I did tacos before. Yeah, yeah. So. Like, hey, like I said, I'm not a big cook or anything yeah. like that, so I don't even want to attempt to pretty much do a, a fillet pretty much yeah. with some steak and yeah, mess yeah. it up. So I just you know, usually I usually probably give away, you know, I'm a single guy. I'm just at home alone. And yeah. I probably give away more than more, half more of the deer mm-hmm. yeah, to, to again, buddies and things like that. And that still lasts me a year easily, yeah. you know, so 
It's there not something that you're eating every day. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I still have a little bit left from the deer I shot like two years ago. I mean, not much, but just a little bit yet. Um, you got to keep those fillets, man. I tell you, you can either pick up one of them Traegers, makes it super simple, uh-huh. or, and look if you don't already have one, or um, I started, because uh, I, yeah, I was like, you know, I was like, man, I just I spent all this time, all this money. I finally got my deer down. I'm, I'm going to like eat this fillet, right? And feed it to my family. I didn't want to mess it up because mm-hmm. it's like the prize jewel of what exactly, it is, right? Exactly, exactly. You don't want to mess it up. You don't want to overcook it. And uh, I ended up getting one of those uh, sous vide cookers where it's like the water bath cooker. Oh, yeah, yeah. It seems to vacuum yeah. seal it and you vacuum seal it and then sous vide it. And that way I knew exactly what temperature it was. And I wasn't overcooking it and just like grilled it and like got the mark char on it and then mm-hmm. just I'm telling you, if, are you do you like it. steak? Like, uh, yeah. You were just yeah. at you were just at Jeff Ruby, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Bro, yeah. I think Jeff Ruby ain't holding the candle. To <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Shout out Jeff Ruby. <laughs> no, but it's some good stuff, man. Oh, yeah. like, How do you like it cooked? A medium guy. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, can you do perfect. can you do oh, yeah. steak like that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. can you do? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. It's and better that way. Because oh. if you overcook it, it gets super tough. Yeah, I, yep. I would imagine. The, the right. medium would be the way to go. So oh, you should sure. keep those back straps for sure and cut them up into little steaks. Here's what you do. You get, yeah. right. You're going to shoot a deer before, in between now and Michigan. Yes. Well, you'll probably be at the game because it's at home. Yeah. But I was going to say, if you're not, throw a big party. Have some of that. Serve it up. That's Let's a see. game winner, buddy. We'll game. See. They're good. We'll see. <laughs> or we'll just shoot one. We'll invite him over. I'll bring yeah, him exactly. over. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. That's what I'll, it is. I'll bring you some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring you some. That's awesome. We get Schlegel Valley. He's got that. Uh, he's got that dough right there. We'll just leave after here and go have lunch. <laughs> he's in town. No, that's awesome, man. Um, so you're gonna keep up. You're gonna keep it up. Yeah. You keep up. Keep it up. Um, the bow. I mean, you gotta keep with the bow. You gotta get that set up now. We gotta go shoot sometime. That'll be fun mm-hmm. for sure. We get, yeah. I mean, schedule and stuff and Schlegel. Nice contact. range behind the store back here. I don't know you're, where you, you live in Columbus. Archie, you got your archery range here? Yeah, behind it's the city it's, of it's a, it's a city of Obets. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's just right on the other side of the parking lot, back down uh, the hill. You guys have you guys did the uh, 3D range in Grove City? Uh, my uh, pro staff Andrew lives uh, like in uh, the eastern area, and mm-hmm. he went down. He they had like big elk and stuff down there. He was practicing uh, for tack for that tack event in Grove oh, City. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's pretty There's sweet. another one I guess too down in southern Ohio by Lebanon area by our Lebanon store. I think there was another one down there too. There's one in Hawking area too, like down by Hawking Hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all they grow, over. Yeah, yeah we did. Um, cool. If you're if you're like, man, he would you would love a tack. We'll have to I'll have to hook up with you for yeah. next year. So tack is total archery challenge. They have them all over the country. Uh-huh. La- last year I went to one in uh, Seven Springs Resort in Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's like um, uh, what was it? Probably an hour and a half past Pittsburgh, maybe, and um, or you know the Washington, PA area, like when you make the drop down, and. Uh, Dude, we were shooting like 80, 90 yards to in the mountain, like in the like the ski resort. And it's not a mountain by any means, like mm-hmm. not compared to out west. But they have them there. They had them at uh, like Utah, Montana, South Dakota, oh, all over the place. Yeah, down in Tennessee. They had that one down in Tennessee to start mm-hmm. the year out. And then uh, Justin, who we, we went down and shot, he gave us some tickets. We shot the uh, archery hike down in Hawking Hills. Yeah. So we went down uh, Logan area. And we didn't like get into Hawking Hills, but we stayed in that like that general vicinity. And dude, he he set up a course through his like private like little cabin property. It was like a, what was ended up being like almost two miles, I think, is what yep. we ended up doing. Yep, I used to like awesome. bushwhack yeah. through and like try to find sweet. targets and stuff. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, there's always ways to keep sharp. You know, it always goes back to like that prep. You know, that way when it comes time for you to, we can tie this back to sports too. But you know, if you if you're always practicing and you you make your practice, I know, like Urban said this all the time, but or, you know other coaches. But you make practice so hard that the game becomes easy, right? You can right. do the same thing with archery and hunting too. You, know, you make your practice so regiment. I mean, I bet you we shoot. A two, lot. I, I shoot at least two thousand shots every summer, wow. probably, and you know, just every night. No way, come time for. Now I'll say that, and I missed that doe last year. But, <laughs> but um, you know, when it comes time for the you know the actual game, it's just like, oh, right? Yeah, so good to go. Well, cool. cool. Well, thanks for your advice on that. Yeah, <laughs> this guy. Well, that's all I had for him, man. I just want to get that Schle- yeah. that story. Yeah, uh, Schlegel made it seem like that was his only time hunting, so I'm glad we got more no, because uh, I'm like, man, no, we're gonna no. have to get that. We're gonna <laughs> get this size I've 14 lot, shoe yeah. and stuff. Right. No, I've been out a lot, but it's that's awesome. Time, so I'm glad to see that time. though, man. So, thanks again for coming out. I know mm-hmm. everyone's got crazy schedules, and so we appreciate you taking yeah. the time and yeah, swinging no. out here in Obets, man. Anytime you're around, you let us know. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been great. 
All right, everyone, that is all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed that conversation with Cardell. Like most of us here in Ohio, I was born wearing scarlet and gray, and it's been super fun to be able to sit down with these athletes and show that they're just like us. Cardell was certainly no exception. As always, we appreciate you listening. Good luck this hunting season, and until next time, enjoy the pursuit.